at the present time. Uh, back in the astronaut quarters, the crew is having breakfast at this time. They're having a traditional breakfast of orange juice, steak, eggs, toast, and coffee. They were awakened about 20 minutes ago when it was determined by launch director George Page that everything was going smoothly and that we were ready to proceed with the wake up of the crew. Uh, after breakfast, they will be going into the uh, suiting room where the biomedical instrumentation will be attached and that they will put on their pressure suits. John Young and Bob Crippen are walking out of the breakfast area now on their way to the suiting room. The first thing that they'll be doing will be to have the biomedical sensors attached. They are looking very fit. Uh, a big smile on the face of Bob Crippen. John Young, who doesn't smile quite as much, uh, does look quite happy to be moving into this phase of the preparations for the launch. This is shuttle launch control at T-minus two hours, five minutes, and holding. At the present time, the astronauts are in the process of putting on their uh, boots, which they'll wear during the flight. Uh, they already have put on their pressure suits. Astronaut John Young is having his boots adjusted uh, at the present time, uh, helping uh, make sure that the, uh, the pants to his pressure suit are at the right level. Uh, one of the technicians is in the process of checking the uh, contents, moving something from John Young to Bob Crippen and putting it in one of the many pockets which are in the pressure suit, which contain the things which they need during the flight. Uh, such things as their checklists and uh, various other papers which are necessary are very handily arranged so that they are right where they need them when they want them. Uh, astronaut Bob Crippen has just checked some of that uh, and is the process of making sure that nothing is getting rumpled up as he pushes it into the pocket uh, in the leg of that suit. This is shuttle launch control at T-minus two hours, five minutes, and holding. At the present time, astronaut John Young has uh, put on his space helmet, locked it in place, and is in the present time they are testing to make sure that that system is working properly. It has sort of a, uh, a tightening device which at the neck which is pulled down to ensure that we have absolute integrity. Uh, these are the suits which would protect them during the uh, mission. Actually the, the cabin uh, pressure is controlled and the atmosphere so that theoretically such a suit would not be needed. Astronauts John Young and Bob Crippen are just exiting the O and C building at the Kennedy Space Center in their space suits, or pressure suits, on their way to the astronaut van, which will take them to the pad. They are moving toward the van, uh, along with the suit technicians, waving to the crowd as they get in, Bob Crippen being the final uh, astronaut to get in. He is entering the orbiter at this time. Uh, the very small hatchway that goes into the interior, and the astronauts are required to crawl on their hands and knees through that door. Astronaut Bob Crippen has also completed his suiting up process. Uh, the suit technician is checking to ensure that everything is in the proper place, that the helmet is locked to the, uh, the neck ring, and that uh, the uh, rest of his suit is in the proper configuration, and then he, too, will be uh, entering the orbiter. Meanwhile, the astronaut support uh, pilot is inside and is helping with the hookup. Astronaut Bob Crippen now uh, crawling through the hatchway and into the orbiter itself. This is shuttle launch control at T minus nine minutes and holding. The Gox vent arm or beanie cap has just been retracted and will be moved to the side momentarily. 
Uh, at that point, uh, we'll have uh, several important milestones still remaining uh, in the, the countdown. When we come out of the, uh, the count, or come out of the hold and begin the count once again, the ground launch sequencer will take over command of the remaining events as well as monitoring the shuttle system's response. At T-minus seven minutes, the orbiter access arm will retract. At T-minus five minutes, the auxiliary power units will be started. At T-minus four minutes, a purge of the main engines will start. And at T-minus two minutes and 55 seconds, liquid oxygen pressurization will begin. At one minute and 57 seconds, liquid hydrogen pressurization, uh, pre pressurization will start. And at T-minus 28 seconds, the redundant set sequencer will take over. At that point, events happen far too quickly, and readings of systems must be done too fast for humans to perform. At the present time, we're waiting for uh, NASA test director George Page, our launch director, uh, to uh, uh, say a few words uh, to the crew about the procedures which will be followed. The, the gaseous oxygen vent arm, uh, the cap has been uh, retracted and the arm is uh, just about to move away from uh, the external tank. At the present time, everything going very, very smoothly. The gaseous oxygen vent arm now is moving back to the retract position, getting it out of the way so that the orbiter can lift off uh, at the, and clear the tower properly. minus seven minutes, 52 seconds, and counting. Uh, this is the final arm, which must be moved out of the way to provide for the orbiter uh, to clear the tower properly. Uh, this may be a very uh, interesting launch to watch from the standpoint that the orbiter is able to translate uh, slightly horizontally as it begins to lift off, and it also does a roll maneuver uh, which will uh, place it, uh, the orbiter, sort of on its back as it goes uh, towards the uh, proper inclination to the equator. T minus seven minutes, seven seconds and counting. T minus seven minutes and counting. And we have retraction of the orbiter access arm, beginning to move back first uh, away from the orbiter and then to swing away. This was the walkway attached to the service structure and used by the crew to walk to the orbiter. T minus 35 seconds. We're just a few seconds away from switching to the redundant sense sequencer. T minus 27 seconds. We have gone for redundant set sequencer start. T minus 20 seconds and counting. T minus 15, 14, 13. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, or we've gone for main engine start. We have main engine start. And we have a lift off of America's first space shuttle. And the shuttle has cleared the tower.
Columbia, Houston, you're going throttle up. Roger, go throttle up. Roger, Columbia on the nice ride. You're lofting a little bit, so you'll probably be slightly high at staging. One minute, 45 seconds, coming up on go, no, go. Columbia, you're in negative seat. Uh, that call up says uh, that uh, Columbia, the altitude is too high for ejection seat use. Two minutes, four seconds, standing by for SRB SEP confirmation. <laughs> Roger on the SEP, Columbia. Mark, uh, two minutes, 20 seconds. Confirm solid rocket booster SEP. Take out for this year. Mark, uh, two minutes, 30 seconds. On, gui on board guidance is converging his program. Columbia is now steering for his precise window in space for main engine cutoff. Mark, two minutes, 40 seconds. Columbia now 39 nautical miles in altitude, uh, 42 nautical miles downrange. Mark, uh, two minutes, uh, 50 seconds. Columbia. Columbia, you're looking a little hot. All your calls will be a little early. Okay. Columbia now has two engine rotor capability. Good here. Mark, Roger. three minutes. Young and Crippen really moving out now. Velocity now reading uh, 6,200 feet per second. Mark, uh, three minutes, 15 seconds. Columbia now 51 nautical miles in altitude, 66 nautical miles down range. Velocity now reading 6,500 feet per second. Mark, uh, three minutes, 30 seconds. Columbia now 55 nautical miles in altitude, 78 nautical miles down range. Mark, uh, three minutes, 40 seconds. Uh, standing by for a return status check and mission control by Flight Director Neil Hutchinson. Columbia given a green to continue. Mark, three minutes, 55 seconds. Standing by for a press D'Amico, which says Columbia should lose one engine. Columbia, uh, press stand by, press D'Amico. Columbia continues flying forward, coming up on negative Mark, return. Press for Miko. Roger, press for Miko. Mark, uh, four minutes, eight. Columbia, stand by for negative return. Mark, negative return. And your map is good. Mark, uh, four minutes, 25. Five seconds with that. With that call up from okay, Capcom. Yeah. Capcom Brandon Stein, Columbia now committed to space travel. Young and Crippen can no longer turn around and return to the launch site. Columbia Houston, uh, we're showing both Ohm's PC transducers off scale high. Mark, uh, four minutes, uh, 45 seconds. The uh, flash evaporator is activated on board to cool uh, Columbia. Roger, stand by. We'll keep an eye on it. Mark, four minutes, 56 <laughs> seconds. Columbia is lofting early in the second stage, is now being taken out of the trajectory as programmed. Columbia now 74 nautical miles in altitude, 181 nautical yeah, miles down. Glad you're enjoying it. Mark, uh, four minutes, 15 seconds. Uh, Columbia now 75 nautical miles in altitude, uh, 202 nautical miles down range. Velocity now reading 11,000 feet per sec. Uh, a status check and mission controlled by Flight Director Neil Hutchinson. Columbia, Houston, you're go at 5.30, Miko, 8 plus 3, 4. Mark, uh, 5 minutes, uh, 40 seconds. That call up from Capcom, Brandon okay, Stein, says that Columbia is projecting navigation and engine performance look good. Columbia, reading you loud and clear. Okay, you're clear, a little weak. 
Mark, uh, five minutes, 55 and seconds. Columbia, we just switched over. Bermuda, boy, should be getting better here in a second. Six minutes, uh, Columbia now 76 nautical miles in altitude, 280 nautical miles downrange, velocity now reading 13,000 feet per second. Columbia, Houston, uh, could we have the cryo heaters, please? And Columbia, your single engine rota. Mark, uh, six minutes, 25 okay, seconds. That call up from Capcom Brandon Stein says that if two engine failure occurred, Columbia is capable of an emergency landing at Rotor Naval Air Station, Spain. Mark, uh, six minutes, 40 seconds. Columbia pitching over now, diving to increase velocity, decrease altitude, giving Columbia her most favorable attitude. Columbia now 72 nautical miles in altitude, 373 nautical miles downrange. Velocity now reading uh, 16,400 feet per second. You can do your control room. Standing by for a single engine uh, Preston Miko call up from Capcom Brandon Stein. Columbia, your single engine, press for Miko. Mark, seven minutes, 20 seconds. That report says a young Crippen can achieve orbital insertion even if two engines go out. Mark, uh, seven minutes, 30 seconds. Columbia, 67 nautical miles in altitude, 485 nautical miles down range. G-Force is building for young and Crippen now up to three Gs. Thank you very much. Mark, uh, seven minutes, uh, 45 seconds. Columbia's main engine slowly being throttled back now. Should be throttled at 65% at six seconds before main engine cutoff. Status check in the control center. Columbia Houston, you're go at eight. Mark, eight minutes, four seconds. Columbia now 63 nautical miles in altitude, 606 nautical miles downrange. Mark, eight minutes, 15 seconds. Columbia now... 63 nautical miles in altitude, 650 nautical miles downrange. Standing by now for main engine cutoff. Confirm shut down. Uh, Columbia, the gem of this new ocean now in space, not yet in orbit. Now, now standing by now for external tank separation. Okay, we've had SEP. Roger, we confirm the SEP, Columbia. Nine minutes, three seconds. Confirm external tank separation. Columbia now per performing an evasive maneuver, moving below and beyond and translating the north of the external tank. Uh, Young should see it moving away out his window. Uh, 